Hey everybody, my name's Anna, and if you've been following me for a minute, you know that I travel full-time in my converted van Firefly with my dog Sterling and our new kitten Inara. So if you've been following along, you know that last week I posted four different videos to do a choose your own adventure day in van life, uh, sort of fun experimental little film um, that took a, a lot of effort and work. And um, between that and the electric issues that I've been having, um, I'm just going to keep this week's video short, pretty sweet and to the point. So let's talk electric systems. In my van, I have a 170 amp hour lithium battery from Renogy. I also have a 1500 watt inverter. I used to have a Renogy inverter. I ended up sending it back because it didn't work. I have Renogy battery monitor, Renogy solar controller, Renogy solar panels. Um, and so far I have absolutely not been super impressed with Renogy. Um, so when I was going into this project, this van build project, I did probably like hundreds of hours of research on electric. Um, all the information out there is pretty conflicting. You have all the people on like Facebook that seem to know what they're talking about, but you're not a hundred percent sure. Um, you know, you have all the blogs and YouTube of what people are using and Renchi seemed like a really safe bet for me. So I spent a ton of money up front on all of those components. Then I hired someone to rig it all into the van. Um, in hindsight, I, 100% wish that I had done something different. So I've been having issues with basically every part of my electric system, um, except for the actual wiring in. Um, but the big components I've been really struggling with. Um, over the last couple weeks, I was barely able to get through the night without my battery dying every single night. So we're currently in Memphis and it's super hot. Um, even at night still here, it's like 75 degrees. And so the van died again two hours after we got here. It went from 12.8 um, volts to like nine. And then it just plummeted from there within like an hour, um, maybe two. So really hoping to get this figured out this week. This is such a pain in the butt. I turned on the van for a bit so that we can run the fan for a little while more and just like let it cool off in here. Um, but obviously like you can't go to sleep with the fan on. So really hoping to get this figured out. Electric system going wrong. It's like oh, the freaking worst in a van. It just drives me absolutely insane. So I figured that the battery was dead. Um, turns out that it might not have been the problem, but when I called Renogy, all that they could tell me over the phone was, well, send it back to us. If it's not broken, then we're going to charge you shipping and restocking and all of that stuff. Um, and then, um, send it back to you and not have a replacement in between that time. So since I'm living and working full time in the van, this obviously was a problem for me, um, to not be able to have a battery while they were looking at my battery. And if it had not been the battery itself, then, you know, I would have just owed all this money. So I reached out over Facebook and, um, luckily ended up talking to a consultant who is an expert in this area named Sam Reiser. He works with um, Just Roaming Conversions out of uh, Oregon. And he was able in half an hour to tell me basically what was going on with my electric system in a super knowledgeable way. And I desperately wish that I had talked to him in the beginning of this process rather than just right now. Um, it would have saved me a ton of time, a ton of energy. And, a, and in the end of the day, it would have saved me a lot of money because of the different things that now I need to order and start replacing my electric system with if I want to have a electric system that I actually can rely on, um, which working full time from my van is really, really important to have an electric system that I can actually, um, count on to just work when it's supposed to work. So that's my biggest advice to all of you out there. If you're watching this to try to figure out some things about electric, hire a consultant. I think he charges like a hundred dollars an hour 
to talk to him. You probably just need an hour or two of his time and it will save you so much time and money. They also do full actual like installing everything and I highly, highly recommend him because he just changed the whole way that I thought about my electric system. So basically what I'm going to have to do is one, increase the amount of solar and battery that I have eventually. Um, but for now I'm going to, um, just install a shore power converter so that when I am running low on battery, I can get to a campground. I can go to a friend's house, whatever, and fully charge up my battery. And then it will actually last me for a couple days and be able to top off with the solar. But at, in the winter with the way that the sun is and the angle of the sun, it just was not, um, charging my solar panels enough to fully charge back up my dead battery. So, um, basically, uh, you need more battery and solar than you ever think that you might if you're doing the full-time thing. Um, the 170 amp hours of battery that I have is just not cutting it right now. Um, and also, I highly suggest using Victron products rather than Renogy. Um, their technicians are a lot more trained in the actual technicalities of how things work rather than just being salespeople like basically Renogy seems to be. Um, whenever I've had an issue, I've called and they can barely really walk me through what's going on. So highly, highly, highly recommend Victron Energy products. Um, what I did for my short power conversion, I know there's a couple different ways of doing this. You can get an inverter that's also a charger, different things like that. Since I already have an inverter, I went with the Victron IP65 Blue Smart Charger. So to get the extension cord to where it can go inside without having to close the door on it all the time, we're going to drill a little hole right in the side of the van here and um, feed this um, little device through it. This little device is basically a plug that will come out of the side of the van and allow me to plug in from just any sort of regular house plug or plug at a campground and plug directly into the Victron charger so that it will charge directly into the battery rather than having to run an extension cord out the side of my van. Since this does require cutting into the van, I was grateful to be staying in Fayetteville where I have friends <laughs> with the know-how to help me. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Once we drilled the center hole, we used a screwdriver just to make sure there wasn't any crazy metal beams or something that we hadn't accounted for in that hole. Then we needed to drill the hole and look at the sheep's hole insulation to make sure there wasn't any wiring underneath that we had to be concerned about. We cut the wool away and actually discovered there was a cord that is one of the original Ford Transit cords running to the brake lights, but we were able to just push it out of the way and continue going on. Then we actually drilled the hole from the inside because with the tongue and groove it was a little bit hard to drill from the other side of it. And um, that went very well, but you can tell that uh, Kitty was not so happy about it. Then we filed the outside and inside of the holes so that over time the electric cords won't get cut by the sharp edge. We threaded the actual part through the hole to the other side making sure that it actually fit in there. We then put silicone all around the edge of the part and the van. It is sometimes recommended that you put a little bit of paint along those edges just to absolutely protect against rust. We did not do that, but if you want to be completely bomb proof, that is probably the way to do it. Finally, we put a little bit more silicone around the edges just to make it extra bomb proof. Then I needed to actually hook the charger into the terminals. I thought this would be an easy step, but of course, nothing in van life is actually easy ever, and the connections were the wrong size. Luckily, Steven to the rescue once again. These batteries come, or these leads go straight to the battery terminals. So they kind of work as like auxiliary terminals. And these little guys are too small to go on there. 
So this will come in to these terminals here. And this is why I get help from friends who know what they're doing. After Steven hooked it up to the terminals, then came the moment of truth. We plugged it in and thank God the lights came on. We used Velcro fastener to hook up all the cables. I actually have another plug in case I want to hook anything else into shore power as well. And then I actually was able to look at the Victron Connect app and see how much my battery was actually charging. The Victron Bluetooth capability is obviously a huge plus in their column, but they have a huge other pluses in other ways as well. I'm ordering the battery monitor next. It should be in in a couple days. I'm really excited about that because I want to see the amperage, not just the voltage. With lithium batteries, the amperage um, may be really low, but the voltage will still be high, and therefore a lot of battery monitors will estimate that you have more battery than you did, which is why I thought my battery was draining so fast. This is another reason why I really appreciated my time with the consultant, is that he was able to explain these things to me. All right, everybody, thank you for joining me again this week um, for this short little sort of how-to on hooking up the shore power along with some of my thoughts about electric systems in general. Um, definitely one of the more stressful parts of van life. Uh, next week, we'll be going into some of the other van life chores that you have to deal with on a regular basis that aren't just the glamorous we're out in the woods camping every day kind of van life dream. It's, you know, how do you empty the nature's head, composting toilet? How do you find water? How do you find campsites? Um, all of those kind of daily logistics we'll be going into next week. Um, as for right now, I did want to give a shout out to uh, one of my followers, Demetrios, um, who reached out over my Venmo link that's linked below. I really appreciate your contribution to the show. Um, apparently Sterling does too. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was just super, super kind of you. Your words were uh, really uplifting and helped me through a difficult week when I had to take my van in the shop. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I appreciate you and I appreciate all of you who have sent um, in such nice comments and, um, you know, weeks like this where it's just difficult and expensive and realizing that I made a lot of expensive mistakes early on, um, you know, hearing your kind words and um, reaching out and getting messages from all of you and being able to interact with some of you like over Instagram and stuff really lifts me up and um, gets me through the kind of the harder moments of van life because it isn't all just, you know, pretty people looking over, you know, mountain ranges. It's some of that, yes, um, but not all. And that's part of, I think, intentional living is it's not all easy, but in the end of the day, you know, you know, this is what I want to be doing and this is right for me. Um, if you're interested in, you know, learning more about living intentionally, I do have an ebook available on my website and we'll be putting out an online course soon. So check all that stuff out in the description and thank you so much for joining me. I will see you next time.